Welcome back to the Startup Channel and to another startup story. Today we take an in-depth look at one of the most important developments in the music industry. Some of you will still be familiar with the business we will be talking about today. As you could tell from the title, today we're talking about Napster. From its beginnings to today, from innovations to legal battles, we will explore all aspects of this fascinating journey. As always, everything else after the intro. <laughs> The birth of Napster. Let's start at the beginning, at a time without smartphones, streaming services, or permanent and mobile access to the internet. Napster was founded in 1999 by two teenagers, Sean Fanning and Sean Parker. The idea was simple but revolutionary to create a platform where users could easily share their music files. At that time, the internet was slowly emerging, but most people still used CDs or cassettes, which always had to be bought at a high price. Fanning, himself an enthusiastic and very good programmer, developed the first version of Napster, which made it possible to share music files directly between users' computers. The platform spread extremely quickly, and within an extremely short period of time, Napster had millions of users worldwide. The music revolution, Napster revolutionized the way people consumed music. Instead of buying expensive CDs, users could now simply download the songs they wanted, for free. If you wanted to share and exchange music with your friends, you no longer had to spend time copying the data storage media. This led to explosive growth of the platform, as the traditional music industry tried to keep up with the very rapid changes. Napster's user base grew exponentially, and the platform became synonymous with peer-to-peer -peer music sharing. The music industry came under pressure as CD sales declined and artists began to resist the new phenomenon. The founders Sean Fanning and Sean Parker, the creative minds behind Napster, became prominent persons in the startup scene. Sean Fanning was born in 1980. After the development of Napster, he founded two more startups. Snowcap, also a startup for music like Napster and Rupture, a social media gaming startup, which he later sold to EA Sports. Sean Parker was born in 1979. After the Napster shutdown in 2001, he founded a new startup for social media software solutions, the Piaxo Company. In 2004, he started working for Facebook after leaving Piaxo. Back then, he owned 7% of Facebook. Since 2006, he is working for a venture capital company and invested $15 million in Spotify in 2009. Togator with his wife, he founded a foundation which is supporting life sciences and public health care. Legal Challenges and the Temporary End However, fame also brought challenges. The music industry saw Napster as a threat and launched legal action against the company and its founders. The battle over copyright and intellectual property would have a decisive impact on Napster's future. The music industry won in court and Napster was forced to shut down its service. Legal pressure and financial strain led to bankruptcy in 2001. Although the original Napster lost its luster, it had a lasting impact on the digital music revolution. However, Napster's demise opened the door for other platforms to legally distribute music over the internet. The music industry began adapting its business models, and streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music entered the stage. The Rebirth of Napster Yes, Napster actually still exists. What many people don't know is that Napster was purchased and acquired by Rhapsody in 2011. Today's Napster no longer has much to do with the product developed in the USA in 1999. Napster is now a normal and legal streaming service that is no longer free as it used to be, but offers relatively cheap subscription conditions. The company also pays royalties to the music industry as normal. In contrast to other companies in the industry, Napster does not rely on a lot of television advertising and large marketing campaigns, but rather on partnerships. For example, with the telephone provider O2 or the German company Aldi. The streaming provider is independent and only makes money through music, not through hardware, advertising, or data sales. Conclusion Napster is a platform that shocked the music industry and fundamentally changed the way we consume music, turning its founders into icons of the American internet startup scene. Napster's story reminds us how technological innovation can revolutionize the industry but also how legal challenges and financial pressures can pave the way for new developments. If you have any questions about Napster, 
or if you have feedback in general, feel free to write a comment. Thank you for taking the time to explore the Napster story with us. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more of our fascinating videos. See you next time.